Have you ever taught someone how to do something and just a few short weeks later find out that the process or the website has changed and now your best friend, your coworker, or even your grandma is confused? Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Effective YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about how to manage these kinds of checklists and some of the best ways to do so. In this video, we're going to dig into the why behind checklists and processes, how they're important for people running any kind of operations from running a household to running a small business to working in a massive corporation. Plus, we're going to talk about three main ways that people use to manage these kinds of checklists, and including a new way, which is the sponsor of this video. Part of personal knowledge management is process and managing those processes. What is a process? Well, a process is really just a defined way to get from point A to point B, to get to a defined end goal. Publishing this YouTube video is a process, as well as managing a personal knowledge management system in a tool like Obsidian. Or if you're using a system like getting things done, that's a process as well. Processes essentially oil down to checklists, an ordered list of steps that you check off along the way to make sure that all of the work is getting done, that the most important bits aren't missed. And being able to put these checklists into places where you can locate them, use them repeatedly, and also update them is incredibly important because things change. Atul Gawande wrote an excellent book on processes and checklists and how they benefit organizations and people. In the book, he says, good checklists, on the other hand, are precise. They are efficient, to the point, and easy to use even in the most difficult situations. They do not try to spell out everything. A checklist cannot fly a plane. Instead, they provide reminders of only the most critical and important steps, the ones that even the highly skilled professional using them could miss. Good checklists are, above all, practical. There are a number of benefits to having defined processes and checklists. First and foremost being a lower error rate. In the book, Atul Gawande talks about his experience as a surgeon and how essentially creating a checklist of all the things that surgeons and the surgical team needed to do to be ready for a surgery, especially in case of if there was an emergency happening, allowed for much better outcomes in the long run. A checklist also lowers your cognitive load. What does that mean? Well, it means that you don't have to think about what to do next. The other main benefit, especially in the workplace for having a defined process is delegation. Processes help businesses and organizations, whether you are a small business with one person bringing on a second employee to a business that has thousands of people, it helps you scale because you can take one person who has the knowledge, put the knowledge into a checklist and then hand that checklist off to someone else and say, oh, Okay, you can do this thing now because I have the process laid out to you. Obviously, there's going to be some differences in how we handle and think through things, but you have the defined big picture process of how this work gets done. That allows more people to get involved, but it also allows for consistency across the board. And that consistency is often what helps businesses and groups of people in their operations scale to the next level. However, the biggest downside to having a checklist, a process like this, is that it's ridiculously difficult to maintain. The second law of thermodynamics definitely applies to checklists because if you don't actively maintain them, they will not stay up to date over the course of time with how things change. Let's get into some of the ways that we can start to manage checklists. The easiest, most straightforward way to create a process is to do it in some kind of note-taking application. Obsidian is perfect for this. You literally can hit control enter and create a bullet inside of Obsidian. And so what I wanna do today is to just flesh out this high level YouTube process. So on and so forth. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time fleshing out this checklist, but the big deal here is that you can flesh it out in a way that's locatable, repeatable, and updatable. In Obsidian, extremely easy to update. You just literally edit the text. It's locatable because you can search for it. If you create a new note for it, good to go. The way to make this repeatable in Obsidian is that you create a template for it. So I'm gonna just extract this to a brand new note, just as an example. We're gonna do extract a new note. First line is file name. Here we go. And now we have this YouTube checklist note. I can remove that heading there. Now it's in the title. And then if I wanna make this, all I have to do is move it into my templates folder, 
and there we go. We have a repeatable template that we can pull into other notes inside of Obsidian if I'm using Obsidian to manage these kinds of processes. Sometimes the best way to teach people how to do something is literally just to show them. This video is an example of just that as well as my course that you can see on the screen here, Obsidian Made Simple, that I made with Francesco D'Alessio of Keep Productive. We're literally walking you through how to use Obsidian. Sometimes those visuals in a video are the best and most effective and efficient way for someone to learn a piece of information. Loom is another tool that a lot of people use to do quick capture videos to show people how to do things in a software. The downside though of video is that it's permanent. There's a lot more overhead to create a video. There's a lot more effort that it takes to make a video. But then when software changes, when life changes, when the process changes, you then have to go and completely recreate the video. It's not the most effective thing. And that's where I want to get into today's sponsor of this video, Scribe. Scribe is a simple and easy way to share processes with other people on how to do things. You literally just click a button in your browser and it tracks what you do in your browser, what you click on, and it takes screenshots along the way so that you can easily show and share what someone can do somewhere on the web. So what I wanna do next is literally walk through my first use of Scribe so I can show you how to use things and then document a workflow on my own website so that you can see just kind of the gist of how this works. Okay, so my end goal here is to describe the process of how to send out an email newsletter. This will be on my brand new website at thinkeffective.co. We're in the process of rebranding the channel here and the whole business, and this is what it's going to look like, as you can see on the screen here. So this is Scribe. I've literally done nothing to it so far except sign in and create a password. So this is a brand new experience for me, and I hope it's helpful for you. Let's click this Create Scribe button. So as you can see, it takes us to the Chrome Web Store. So we're going to click Add to Chrome, and then Add the Extension. And now we've added it to Chrome. Okay, we've successfully installed it. It's brought us right back into the interface. And now we'll want to add full access or to bring it up here. We'll dismiss that and we'll do just that real quick. We'll pin it so that we have access to it. Awesome. So I want to create a scribe. Okay, so this brings me to the tabs that are open in Chrome. Really, really easy. So I can just pick the one that I want. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the back end of my new ghost site. And I'm going to just start creating the process from here. So again, remember the goal is that I want to create a newsletter so that I can show someone how to publish a newsletter with Ghost. I'm going to click on the scribe button and hit start recording. All right, so you can see down at the bottom that it's now recording and I can show the controls. I can delete the scribe, I can pause, I can move the controls and I can complete it. Pretty simple and straightforward to use. So the way that you make a newsletter inside of Ghost is you literally hit the click, you click the plus button here, and then you can start writing it. Hello, I'm a newsletter. Please write my content. So then I go over to the side panel over here. I can write this, I can add a tag, newsletter. I can make this members only. And then literally that's it. There's a few other things I can do here. I can type in an excerpt. Please write my content. I can fix metadata, but because this is a private newsletter, you don't need to worry about that too much. And then I can preview the content so that I can see what it's supposed to look like on the site. Get back out of that. And then I can hit publish, schedule it for later. So then it, it would send my email here and I can schedule that. Obviously I don't have any subscribers right now, so you should go subscribe, thinkeffective.co. So that's it. I'm going to hit stop and complete the recording. Once you complete the recording, you literally get dropped right into the process inside of Scribe. And I think this is really cool. You can edit this little icon up here so that it more accurately describes visually what you're trying to accomplish. You can edit the title, how to publish a newsletter, 22 steps, two minutes, and it gives you the exact website. This is where I think it gets super cool because it breaks down all the steps for you, 
automatically. As someone who's done a large amount of technical writing over the course of my career and customer support, this is the game changer because all of this stuff is the stuff that takes a long time to do. Writing out the steps, taking the screenshots, highlighting what you need to click on, that's a lot of manual effort and Scribe does it all for you. I think this is really fun. So literally what we did, navigate to effective.ghost.io slash ghost, which is the backend domain name for my site. Click this icon, you can go in and edit it. I can literally say click the add post button. Type, hello, I'm a newsletter. And then you get a screenshot. You can click here, which shows the click into that. Type, please write my content. Then click this icon. We'll say click the hamburger icon, uh, the side panel icon rather. Click search this field, tags, type newsletter, add newsletter, click here, which was clicking off of it. I can delete that step because it's not really important. Yes, I do. Click that drop down. So that's one thing that it missed is clicking that drop down. I changed it to private, so or members only. Change access to members only. So there might be a little bit of manual editing you have to do in this process. So I am gonna delete this because I don't really need it. say add an excerpt, so on and so forth. I'm gonna close the panel, click preview, hit escape to get out of the preview. Click publish, schedule for later. And of course now it's canceling out because it's not actually <laughs> sending a newsletter, but that's literally it. We've created a whole process that would have probably taken me 30 to 60 minutes to do on my own, capturing screenshots, editing them, things of that sort, literally within the context of just a couple minutes here on this video. So I am going to hit done here in just a second, but let's take a look here. You can merge steps, you can select multiple steps, you can find similar steps, you can actually have public comments on this if you're going to share it publicly, which could be really cool for an open educational repository. Uh, and then you can also get notifications for engagement with it. So if you're sharing this in an organization or again publicly, you can have the ability to see how it's getting engaged with, if there's comments, or if people are clapping it or applauding it. It's it done. And now we are ready to go. Now with these solutions for managing checklists, you can obviously choose which one works best for you. I am partial to a couple of them. First being the manual method, whether I'm using a tool like Obsidian or ClickUp or another process oriented tool. I'm also really partial for these website driven click around type tutorials on using a tool like Scribe. Again, they sponsored this video, but all the opinions here and the process that I'm having is literally me reacting to it for the first time and showing you how powerful Scribe can be. But I'm wondering, what do you think about this? How do you manage processes and checklists? Where do you put them? And what would you find helpful? I would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching another episode of the Effective YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay effective in the meantime.